You're listening to Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick in association with Wexford Insurances. Challenge us at Wexford Insurances, 0818 31 30 30. My first guest this morning is Rory McCall from Celtic Link Ferries. Rory, you might start by telling me a bit about the background to Celtic Link Ferries, please. Yeah, Celtic Link Ferries is a, is a shipping company that goes between Ireland and France. Uh, Celtic Link Ferries' inception goes back to 2005, where, where two people who had a joint problem, that's William, of, William O'Leary and the O'Flaherty family of Kilmore Key, had a problem where they needed, where basically... Uh, the cost of shipping was crippling their businesses. Both businesses have a heavy reliance on, on exporting of their products or being involved in exporting themselves. And in 2005, they came together as O'Leary had the, had the issue where he needed to ship his stuff out. The same with uh, the O'Flaherty brothers who had responsibility for exporting their fish. So what they did is they both came together as in both have a mutual problem and both had very mutual and neutral skills that could have benefited the company between knowing seafaring business and also knowing uh, freight business too. It's a very sensible decision. So that saw the setup of Celtic Link Ferries in 2005. Tell me about the first couple of years for the company itself. Uh, the first couple of years were actually very successful for the company. It, it had modest beginnings, of course, but it grew organically over the time between shipping containers, shipping, uh, you know, uh, articulated, articulated trucks as well. Uh, the ship that they had at the time was um, a little bit older uh, compared to today's new standards, but for what it did at the time, it, it had... It had worked fantastically well. It went between Rossdale and Cherbourg, France, where there's quite a high level of, of requirement for people to, to, to transport their, you know, the continent would be a very hot destination for a lot of Ireland's products, whether it be going to Spain, whether it be going to France, or even further mainland uh, across Europe. I know that you changed the ship in 2008. What brought that about? Uh, basically, Celtic Link Ferries had been here for a long time. The ship that they had had become outdated and also that uh, one of our, our rival uh, operators had come on about the, the route, that's LD Lines. When LD Lines came onto the route, they were here with a faster ship, a ship that was better, the narrow one basically. For whatever reason that was internal to LD Lines, after one year they decided not to partake, partake in the market anymore. And the opportunity came about for Celtic Links to, uh, to charter their ship, basically. And they got, uh, Celtic Link Ferries got their ship and, uh, they were able to, to use it. And they used it better as in it was, the ship that they had was better than our, the one that we had at the time. It was faster. It could take more capacity. And it also had the, the, the very beneficial effect of being able to take a, a far more significant number of tourist passengers. I know one of the main transitions that happened within your own business over the last number of years is you've gone from just becoming a specific freight-based ferry company to now also carrying passengers. What effect has that had on your own business? Uh, it's had a fantastic effect, really. Um, you know, from what had been just maybe an 80 to 20% proportion freight to tourist uh, market revenue now has turned into... You know, the likes of 65, 35 or even 60, 40, uh, you know, we have uh, a fantastic facilities ownership to, to deal with, with freight, but also very much with passengers. Like we've got bars, we've got the cinema, we've got the restaurant, we've got things that would facilitate people to go with us. So what people would have thought in the past is absolutely not applicable anymore. We go, we, we will make people's transportation as good as anybody else. Rory, how's the business performing over the past few years? Uh, the business is going very, very strongly at the moment. Um, you know, there has been significant growth in the last two years with regards to, to tourist passengers that are, that are traveling. For example, this year to date compared to last year has seen a 20% increase in the number of people that are traveling. And that's the number of physical tourist passengers that are traveling and a 16% increase in the number of, of tourist vehicles that are traveling. That's year on year in and out of France. And likewise, the freight not without challenges at the moment as well, uh, you know, it is performing well in some segments, but other segments are, are, are performing uh, a little bit less than expected, but not indifferent to the general state of the economy at the moment. Just on the whole area of challenges, what are the main challenges facing Celtic Link Ferries? Um, there, there's quite a, a few challenges at the moment. Uh, naturally, the most, the most 
prevalent one would be the, the issue of fuel. Fuel has increased, you know, two or three fold in, in the last two years. It has really caused big problems for everybody. And you would have heard it in all areas of the media present. It's very a very pertinent issue. And it's on everyone's lips. That would be most definitely the, the biggest issue to, to ourselves. But on a, on a less, lesser scale than that, you know, Celtic Link, Carl, has, has been synonymous as a, as a ferry operator, as a freight operator all throughout Ireland. I can tell you this, you know, this is, although true, it's become very prominent by way of, of the tourist business that it's done. As I've just, the stat I've just told you, we've seen very significant increase in the number of people coming to Ireland. We've seen very significant people in the amount of people leaving Ireland, as in, and even like the port figures this year would show that, you know, there's a lot of people leaving to go to France and, and coming in from France this year, while the UK one isn't as, as encouraging. How many staff have Celtic Link Ferries and are they employed directly or to an agency? Uh, Celtic Link Ferries has, has a, a about a dozen staff on the shore, but it has about between 40 and 50, depending on the time of the year. There's seasonality issues uh, pertaining to who's employed. They're employed through an agency. Uh, they tend to vary. Also, there's there's Irish people there, there's there's French people there, there's Portuguese, there's Spanish. It's just literally a case of uh, you know finding the best people for the job, and uh, and we do think that that there there's well equipped people doing stuff on board. Why have you decided to go with agency staff as opposed to employing staff directly? There was a few reasons chosen for that. The main reason was that you know we wanted to have the best spread of people that we possibly could. Um, you know. It's quite a, a, a labour intensive job in, in finding all of these people, as in uh, finding these people to do it. And, and really, the main reason that was the most significant reason for it. Another reason why we picked it was because we picked the agency was because it's very much the standard within the industry. When one company or when two companies set this precedence, you have no option but literally to remain competitive and follow them in hand. It's 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 also you know compelled by the cost issues. What are you doing to overcome the biggest challenge? i.e. fuel. We're purchasing fuel absolutely as cost effectively as possible. We have contemplated various purchasing options over time. Uh, just considering the, uh, the its propensity to increase or decrease at the moment, uh, making long term, you know, future purchasing arrangements isn't necessarily the best idea at the moment or so it has been taught by the company anyway. What's your relationship at Rossler Europort like? Over the time we've had a uh, a, a roller coaster relationship with with Rossler Europort. We've had, you know, we, there's been times when we, we we get on well with them. There's times when we, we've had issues with things. For example, uh, an issue we have them would be the rates. Uh, the rates is an issue that you know every company feels that they should be paying less. It's just the fact that we've, you know, we've increased our 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 movements significantly in the last two or three years and very much to the benefit of the port and we just feel that considering what the likes of Waterford Port, what Cork Port and what Dublin Port are charging, we don't feel that there's a, a level playing field there and we just feel that it, it's an issue that can be debated in the future. I read recently that the Competition Authority have now gone involved. How did that come about? Uh, well, basically it, it came about with just the ongoing negotiations had hit somewhat of a of a of a brick wall um you know we have we have very much our own objectives that we need to what we need to fulfill and naturally uh, our objectives being fulfilled are going to be impaired by uh what we feel to be over and above the the, the rate that should be charged so really what's happened is that issue has come about uh, in the last six months, they, the competition authority have come involved as a way of checking the level of com- uh, competitiveness between the likes of Dublin Port, Core Port and Ross Airport. And it's going to give, uh, well, what we believe or we hope to believe anyway, that companies will, uh, ferry companies will have uh, a more level playing field. Is Celtic Link Ferry's issue with the port regarding the overall rate or is it in relation to what they're charging your competitors at the port? Um you know, it's it's a little bit of both. You know, I, I've no way of knowing exactly what what the what the competitors are paying, uh, but I would like to. You know, we we just we want to make people go between Ireland and France as as com- as competitively as possible, basically. And really, when we, when we want to do that, the only thing that's stopping us doing that, aside from the fuel, is obviously the the associated poor costs. We want to make sure that that. Everything is in check between the, our, our competitors or the other companies that, op, that operate in the port. We just want to make sure that, uh, you know, it's a level playing field too, that everyone's on the same starting point, basically. Rory, if rates are such a major issue for Celtic Link, 
why aren't you using an alternative port to Rosler? Well, Carl, that's a very interesting question. As I would have said a few minutes ago, uh, the company directors in Kettling Ferries are, are staunchly Wexford-based. They are Their roots are very, very, very much within Wexford, between New Ross and Kilmore Quay. And they would want to see anything coming into Ireland, coming into their own native county, quite naturally. They have that. Um, on a more technical level, there, there's there's quite a few uh, issues that have to be taken into account when when shipping into a certain place. For example, the the location of of potential clients or their own clients. That's also an issue that that needs to be taken into account. Other issues would include, uh, say, the infrastructure, maybe the roads infrastructure or the actual ports infrastructure. For, you have to take into account depth of of the water. You have to take into account the ability of 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 the port to be able to put things on and off that they're necessary uh, structures in the port. Basically, that isn't in all the ports, and that's really a, a, a big issue that needs to be concerned uh, that we need that we're concerned by. But um, you know, we, we've we've certainly done somewhat of of uh, of tests to see and and market research to see ports that we could go to and, and ports that we wouldn't like to go to. So Rory, what are the future plans for Celtic Link Ferries? Well, Carl, the future is very bright actually for Celtic Link Ferries. We have, in, in the short to medium term, we have uh, our real growth is going to become what we believe to be our, our passenger business over the next two years. That, as I would have mentioned, there's been significant growth in the last two years and we very, very much hope to be uh, growth in the next two years regards that say for example there's opportunities by way of the coach business that we, we intend to very much pursue in the next six months this is something that I think there's great growth potential particularly in the low season Well Rory many thanks for coming in this morning and I wish you continued success in your role at Celtic Link Ferries You're listening to South East Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick in association with Wexford Insurances Think Wexford Insurances for your business insurance